Hello class. In this video, we're going to build a menu that allows us to select different tracks, and we'll be able to quit the game. And when you enter the finish point, we'll be able to save the recent time. Okay, so in last video, we have built this recent time script that allows us to control the recent time numbers. And in this video, we're going to write this uh, recent record script that will grab the number in here. Okay, so first we're going to declare four objects. And for the first three objects, these are the three numbers that display at the recent record. And the fourth one will be the recent record uh, trigger. So we're going to create a trigger at the finish point. So here, when you enter this uh, endpoint trigger, you're going to process this uh, script. Okay, the so trigger enter. For the second record display, you're going to get its component, which is a text component here. And what you're going to display is you're going to reference the recent time script we have write in last lesson, and you're going to access the second count. So basically, it's going to copy the second count from the recent time to the recent record. And when the second is smaller or equal than nine, you're going to display in this format. So you're going to display a zero with the number and the dot. And if it is bigger than that, so for example 11, so you're going to remove the zero in front of it and display the number directly with a dot. For minute count, is the same. Um, so now we'll go to the finish banner and we'll create a new 3D object and we'll rename it as a finish point trigger. And turn off is a mesh render, and also turn on is trigger, so it'll be a trigger. And here we're going to bring in our recent record script, so we'll drop it onto the recent record trigger. And here are the four objects we declared in the script. So here you'll just. Uh, um, Apply the mini record display onto the mini record, and then same thing for the second record and mini second record. And for recent record trigger, you will drop this trigger itself onto it. Okay, so now if we test play, it will copy the recent time to the recent record. As you can see, the second time when we enter the finish line, it doesn't update the record time. That is because in the script, uh, when you enter the trigger, we disable this trigger. Okay. And the reason why we do that is if we keep it activated, and after you set the recent time to zero, we're going to copy the zero value to the recent record. So we have to disable this uh, trigger right after we entered it. Okay, so that means we're going to just create a new 3D object and we're going to use it as a trigger after we finish line. So when you enter this uh, trigger, you will be able to activate the uh, recent record trigger again. So here we're going to add a active trigger script onto it. And we're going to make the recent record trigger as the target and car as the source. So whenever the car enters this trigger, you're going to activate the recent record trigger we placed at the finishing line. So here, as you can see, now the uh, uh, recent record trigger is disabled. However, when we enter the active record trigger, you know it activates the recent record trigger. Okay, so now we're going to create a menu. So we'll create a new scene, and we're going to name it as a uh, main menu. And uh, here we're going to create a UI button. Okay, so for this button, go to its text, and we're going to type in track one. So here we're going to uh, create a menu that will be able to select the track. And then here, go to the build setting and make sure to drag in the main menu into here, and then the first thing here. And here are the index number. So main menu's index number will be zero because it's on the top. So whenever we enter the game, it will be known as the default scene. Okay, so here we're going to have a function. When um, you know you press the button node track one, you're going to know the um, the scene which index number is one. 
okay and then we're going to select our canvas and we're going to add this um, manual script and then we're going to select the node track one uh, which is the button and we're going to go to its click function and to create a function so here for the objects we're going to just drop the canvas onto it and for function we're going to go to the main manual script we have wrote and then click on uh, select the node track one function so that means whenever we click on that you're going to load the first scene uh, the scene which index number is one so we're going to test the game and whenever we click on it as you can see it will going to open the first scene all right so now we're going to create a second scene and in the second scene you will create a new terrain system and uh, build a new road um, the, the track and then we're going to go to the first scene and we're going to copy this whole car folder command c copy and then go to the second scene and then command v to paste so if you are on windows system just use control c and control v instead And we play by default it's gonna render from the main camera view so um, because we already have the cameras in the car folder so you can disable the main camera okay so now we'll go back to main camera uh, uh, the main menu scene and here we're going to copy the node track one just hit Command D if you're on Mac system. If you're on Windows, use Control D instead. And for the Node Track 2 button, here we're going to have another function. Okay, we're going to create a new function here. So we can just copy this part and we're going to say Node Track 2. And for this function, we're going to load a scene that index number is 2. And make sure to save the script and go back to the publish settings. So here we're going to bring in our second scene, and here the index number is two. So that means when we process this, uh, this script, click on the second button, you're going to know the scene which index number is two. So that is the track two. So here select the button and make sure to add a function to it. So now if we click on track one, you're going to know track one. Click on track 2, you're going to jump to the second scene. Alright, so now we're going to create the main menu button. So whenever we are in uh, different tracks, we will be able to uh, click on the main menu button to jump back to the main menu. So here the main menu is uh, index is 0, so we can uh, create a uh, node main menu function. And then here in the first track, we're going to create a button, name it main menu. And we can place it at the top left corner in the scene. And then we're going to add uh, the main menu script onto the canvas. And select the button and add a click function and drop the canvas as an object. And uh, for the function, we'll node main menu. And same thing for the track 2. Now, as you can see, if we are in one of the tracks, and if we click on the menu, we'll be able to jump back to the main menu. Alright, so here we're going to select the canvas and we're going to create a new button. And for this button, we're going to make a quit button. So whenever we are done with the game and we want to quit, we can just click on this button and you're going to quit the program. So here for the function, we're going to see application quit and save the script. And for this button, we're also going to know the unclick function. And for this function, we're going to select the quit game. And uh, if you are testing play the game in Unity, nothing going to happen. However, if you publish the game, definitely you're going to quit the application. However, for Unity, we can just add this one sentence of code here. 
whenever we click on this button, it's going to display this message. That is means it is functioning. And whenever we publish this game, um, and we click on this uh, quit button, it's going to quit the game. Okay, so this message is just uh, for testing. All right, when you're done with everything, uh, you can go to the build setting and make sure all of these things is here and check your target platform and you'll be able to build the game.